Hello. Hello. Okay. So thank you very much for being here. My name is Aurel Rod Rodriguez. I'm a MCRPS Workstream Lead, and along with uh, John Lewis from Dell Technologies, he, who is also a Workstream Lead with me, I would like to present the status of the power supply. And uh, Dirk Blevins here, a colleague of mine, he is going to be helping me to hand this, uh, show these power supplies that we have right now. And uh, through this presentation, I will walk you through an overview for all the people that they don't know what the MCRPS is, and the work stream status, mechanical, thermals, and firmware updates that we have had since the last presentation in October 2022. And also, some a quick glance of the present. OK. okay. Thanks. Oh, nice. Huh? <clears throat> OK. So, and also the new format with the design specification that we have and we plan to release uh, probably next month after we do some modifications. And also very exciting for us is that we have now a test, a uh, standardized test setup for the power supplies. So as an overview, the MCRPS specification, it's an effort of the industry to try to standardize, standardize the internal hot swappable and redundant power supplies, mainly for enterprise and storage applications, but it's not limited to since also telco systems can use the MCRPSs, right? And the MCRPS, it's an evolution of the legacy CRPS, which was a standard for Intel, and we started to promote that in the industry for about 13 years now. And since we had these tractions, we, de we decided to just evolve that specification so everybody can have their features inside this uh, new version of the spec, right? So everybody can use the same power supply with the same interface and have many vendors providing those designs. For the form factors that we have for the power supply, we have mainly three. It's the, the one in, the le in your left, 185 millimeters in length and 73.5 millimeters in width. It's also the same as the legacy CRPS, which means it's backwards compatible. You can put a new MCRPS in a legacy system or a legacy CRPS in a new DCMHS system and they will work. Of course, without the features, right, the legacy part. We still keep the long form factor, we call it, which is the 265 millimeters, and we included the new one, which is 60 millimeters in width, which is narrower. And today, we already have power supplies in development from different partners, and we are going to show a couple here. So here in my right, I have a 1.8 kilowatt, 60 millimeters MCRPS from Artisan, and here I have a 3.2 kilowatt, 73.5 millimeters from Solubem. There has in his right a 1.8 kilowatt, 60 millimeters from Light On, and also a 3.2 kilowatts from Delta, 73.5 millimeters. So there are more power supplies in development right now. It's amazing the adoption that we have had during this year. And so if you're interested on which models you can get from your partners, please ask them what they are developing. Thank you, Dirk. So as a quick status for the uh, MCRPS Workstream, on September last year, we were here. We released this 1.00 specification. And uh, since then, we kicked off different power supply models with our partners. I'm going to be showing a list of the tentative models that we will have. It's not limited to that, but at least that was the starting point for us. And uh, in July, of 2023, this year, we released the specification 1.01, .01, and we kept work, working in the updates and released the 1.02 on September. Right now, we are working in the version 1.03, and this is because since we are developing the power supplies along with our partners, we are getting a lot of feedback, right? Not only from them, but also from our potential customers that everybody is going to be adopting everything, right? And uh, we have the basic specifications in the DCMHS wiki, but also we're required to have design specifications. So the first one we are working, it's in the 3.2 kilowatt, which is 185 millimeters and 73.5 millimeters form factor, which is uh, this one that I was showing, right? And this was already approved 
in the work stream and I was talking with the incubation committee to see if we could have a specific format that we would like to have for the MCRPS design specifications. Since the typical format in open compute is a PDF, um, we want to have some sort of a spreadsheet that I'm going to be showing later. They say tentatively say yes, so I'm going to be preparing that presentation for a couple of weeks probably. And if they approve the format and all the information inside, we are going to be posting that in the wiki also and then work in the next seven at the same time and release them as a package because they authorize that, right? That is going to be this Q4. So for the uh, different power supply models that we were having as a starting point, we can see here the 3.2 kilowatts that I just showed the 2.4 kilowatts, 1500 watts in 60 millimeters form factor, which I'll show you in this, this one, it's narrower. And uh, there is a, a 1.8 kilowatts, as I showed also, but also others like 1100 watts, 800 watts, 700 watts, and 600 watts. And for the low, low powers, you can see the 800 watts and 600 watts, it's uh, in titanium and platinum. But for the 3.2 kilowatts, we cannot have that since the exhaust temperature will be too high, right, for safety. So that doesn't mean that this is the only list with power supply models. Power supply partners are developing other models that they might contribute in the future. So please ask your partners again. So for the uh, updates, mechanical updates that we have since version 1.0 last October. Now we have the 3D model for the C22 connector, right? In the past we had all the mechanical drawings and 3D models just for the C14, but now we have the step files also in the wiki. You can download all the models if you want to test it in your system. And we had a change in the LED handle, this one here. So now we have the actual power supply model on the edge here. For example, probably you cannot see it, but there is a label here and it says the, the power, right? So that was new because we were exploring to have like a, a small tap here or something like that, but at the end we decided just to have, have it at the edge, right? That's the latest change in the, in the LED handle. We also remove uh, this uh, sort of fin that we had on top uh, because it was too difficult to manufacture and at the beginning we thought we needed for alignment in the chassis but uh, after an analysis and feedback we, we don't need it anymore so we just removed that. Right? So for thermals <clears throat> we now have three different tiers at the beginning we have them which is the number three which is the most most stringent one but uh, we decided to divide depending on the use case, right? For example, you have the tier number one, which is home, uh, office, and a small business usage. And then we have the number two, which we believe is going to be the majority of the population, the general data center slash storage or enterprise applications. And then we have the uh, high performance computing and high end storage with the higher operating temperature for excursions, right? And specifically, when a power supply fails, we would like to have this capability of having the maximum inlet temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, right? This condition is expected to be only in once in the lifetime of the power supply if another power supply fails and needs to support this, right? All our current power supplies are supporting tier, tier two, the designs. I'm sorry, I've been two days straight in the experience center <laughs> talking with different uh, people. So for the firmware, uh, we have the configuration file in the power supply so we can have different behaviors depending on the customers. Yesterday, actually, a customer asked me if we could have different blinking patterns or something like that. That's something that is already in the specification. But, and we had a, a way to send the configuration file to the power supply, but we didn't have a way to retrieve the configuration back. And that's very important because you can have a power supply that is behaving in an strange way, for example, but it might be because it has a different configuration file that you were thinking that should have, right? So with these new three commands, we can retrieve that configuration file and analyze if that's the one you wanted to have. Also, we have the measurements right, from security, you would like to measure that this area of the flash. 
and we added also the efficiency data. In this case, we will have uh, multiple points with the exact measured data of the power supply in the production line. So it's not only the 80 plus specification, but the actual real data. If you want to have a better control loop or you know something else in your application. We also have the peak current record, so any excursion in the power supply, it can be recorded how many times it's happening and things like that. This is very useful for debug sometimes. So all the work team agreed that uh, we should have this. And also the component ID per ODM, the total power output, which is gonna be dynamic depending, depending on the AC input. As you might know, we have a, a maximum current of 10 amps in the, the C14 connector and 16 amps internationally in the C20 connector. So depending on the voltage, we should not uh, go beyond that current. So this register will give you that exact maximum power that you could extract from the power supply if, the, if you have a voltage droop in, the, in your power grid, right? And we have the, the be out margining in which if you have a system that has too many droops or is too long from the power supply to the load, you can slightly increase the set point of the, of the power supply in the main output, right? And another uh, command that we added for DBOOC is the OCW. So in this case, you can change the threshold to send a warning for the, from the power supply. That way you can use it for debug or for validation purposes, etc. So I was talking about security a little bit. And for that, in the firmware uh, update capability that we have, we have a register called uh, manufacturer firmware upload status. We added two bits. And uh, one of them is that the full image was received but didn't pass all the security checks, right? So with that, the user or the system can see that something happened and it might want to retry or not. That depends on the system itself. But at least we have a bit that is telling us that that image is not gonna be run and the power supply will be in a backup image or bootloader mode. It's still working, they're still running, providing energy and responding to a reduced set of commands in the case of it's in bootloader mode or a full set of commands if you have dual images, right? So we had the another bit because uh, for the configuration file, we have many thresholds, many registers, timing capabilities and things like that. But all of them, they need to be within the envelope of the power supply design itself, the capabilities. So if somebody by mistake or on purpose, they put a big value in one of those registers, the power supply will tell to the user that there is a value that is outside the envelope of the power supply and it's not gonna be using that and it's gonna be the default instead. And we thought this was going to be really useful because once you have the power supply's own field and you get like a, something happened, an issue, somebody changed the configuration file, you actually uh, can see if this is working fine or is not working because of this bit. In the other hand, if you just send the configuration file, there is no feedback control loop or something like that to tell you that everything is good for the power supply, right? And you might have an issue down the road, probably months from today, that is gonna come up and you will be stuck debugging everything, right? So we thought that this, this bit is gonna be very important. And in the same configuration file now, we have the locks mechanism for the margining that I was talking about. And we can lock it or unlock it, also the OCW uh, setting unlock. Uh, we have uh, an option to select the pin A1 from PM bus as a presence detect because some of the customers might not uh, adopt the DSSI right now, but probably in the next generation, but for now they would like to have it as a presence. So the microcontroller, we have these pins tied to ground after boot. And uh, we can have also one bit PM bus addressing in pin A1. It has six levels, so you can have up to six power supplies in parallel, and the current share mechanism supports that. And also you can disable the remote sense. In the latest uh, revision, the 1.02 of the basic specification, I also added uh, this uh, diagram as a memory map representation on how all the different areas, they get together in the flash memory of the microcontrollers. So you can see from uh, your right, we have the pieces of the embedded uh, code, and then they go into the bigger configuration file with the data tables, the configuration area, and its header, and it goes 
encapsulated inside, a, inside an image header for firmware updates. So that is what the system sets, sends to the power supply. And then it's being flashed in the memory right of the microcontroller. So about the design specifications, we have this format. It might be a little bit small. I think it's OK. But the, the good thing about the format of this design specification is that uh, all the values that you might extract or the options from the base specification, they are actually here for that specific model. And they match all the sections from the base specification. So if you say, oh, what's the input voltage of the power supply? You can see here in the section, oh, it's going to be 240 volts DC and AC. And it matches the, the, the same uh, section of the base specification. And all, another advantage of this is that with this spreadsheet, we can feed this information to an automation software in an ATE, automated test environment. And that software, it might be Python, LabVIEW, or whatever that you have, they can extract all the values, run the test, and compare the results, and then have a, like a checklist at the output to automate all the tests that you can. So, and to help with that automation, we started working with our partners of uh, Artisan to develop a, a standardized test setup. So this test setup has everything you need to test the new MCRPSs, all the hooks. You can put the load, etc. And as you can see in the right, it has all the capacitors, 70,000 uh, microfarads capacitance, and you can flip the switches uh, to change the different capacitance that we have. It has the connector for the PM bus, the typical ARVARC that we use. And also, we have something else that is the expansion. The number five is a connector there that you can hook up your own board to connect your ATE setup. Right? So with this, you can automate or manually flip everything in the uh, test board. And this, this was the first uh, fab that we did. It's two power supplies and one power supplies. And this is the last one, which is the late, most latest one. We have it here. And this is actually in display on Artisan's boot, but also in the, M in the DCMHS MCRPS uh, demo. So we have the DSSI working there, and also this uh, test setup, along with the one power supply. And this should be available in, for pushes for anyone on next month, I guess, probably. So join the DCMHS monthly call, and we will have the exact date. So everybody, any, every uh, adopter, every power supply vendor, can purchase this uh, test board. And of course, the design is going to be contributed in Open Compute too, all the schematics and everything, right? So with that, uh, please send, you, send us your feedback. And thank you very much for being here. I am really excited that we have this adoption. It has been so fast. We, didn't ex we were not expecting to have this adoption that fast. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, looks like we're out of time for, uh, for questions on this, but uh, you will be available for questions off, off, offline and in booth today. The SSI demo in the Experience Center.